Are you considering how you can get the most out of your program's use of shadow health? Maybe you've used shadow health before as clinical replacement. Or maybe you have adopted these simulations as part of your SurePath Vantage collection. There are many reasons you might be exploring best practices. In this video, two of our nurse educators will share examples of how to successfully bring shadow health into the classroom. You may have thought, my learners are doing just fine in the clinical and just fine in the classroom. Keep listening to learn how bringing shadow health into your classroom will deepen learners' critical thinking and their ability to successfully put the pieces together. This valuable pedagogical strategy leverages standardized patient encounters to create shared experiences with students that lead to rich discussions. Building new connections between class and clinical learning. Hi. I'm Dee Swanson. I am one of the nursing education consultants here at Elsevier. And today I would like to spend some time talking to you about how to use shadow health in your classroom. So we all know that shadow health is well known for being used as a clinical replacement tool. However, it goes beyond that if you really think about how you could incorporate it into your classroom. So here are a few ideas on what that might look like. So let's look at some of our shadow health cases. We have a section of shadow health cases in the fundamental section that you could definitely think about incorporating. So here's an idea of what that might look like. You could bring shadow health into your classroom and actually conduct an activity around documentation where you would actually go through the case with students in your classroom and then they would have an opportunity to work on documentation and you could talk about subjective data, objective data. You could practice that therapeutic communication skill with your students live in person in a synchronous environment with your students right in front of you. This gives them a chance to get comfortable with what it's like to speak to a patient before they go to that clinical setting. The other thing that you could do is work using the interview guide in Shadow Health. The interview guide basically is set up to allow students the opportunity to figure out exactly what they need to ask to get the information that they need to care for that patient. So for example, if you were using the interview guide in your fundamentals course, you could think about actually using the activity for students in class where they would have to come up with the questions that they would need to know for that patient. So for example, if you have a case around a post-op hip replacement, you could work on pain management and incorporating that fundamentals concept about what pain is, how pain gets treated, and the importance of creating empathy around pain, which is a component of shadow health, where students typically don't score well because they forget about thinking about the empathy that's required in nursing. So by incorporating all of these features, you are actually now creating an environment for students to actually think like a nurse. So they get to apply those clinical judgment skills and shadow health is a great way to tie in those activities, but it also creates an environment where you get to guide the student through what it's like to actually think like a nurse. So in the future, if you're interested in using those ideas, just remember that you can take shadow health way beyond the clinical experience. Hello, my name is Julie Kelly and I'm one of Elsevier's nursing education specialists. When I use the shadow health simulations with my students, we most often assign the simulations outside of class. I would review their performance, but I typically didn't reconnect with students for any formal simulation debriefing. Based on student feedback and simulation best practices, we began implementing debriefing sessions with students after they completed the simulations. The debriefing time allowed students to ask questions, clarify misconceptions, and learn from each other. 
It also allowed me to see how the student was thinking and make decisions and how they made decisions during the simulation. Prior to the debriefing, I reviewed the results in the student results tab. This helped me identify where students excelled and where they struggled. One of the simulations in my course was Mr. Larson, a 46-year-old recovering from a total knee replacement. The debriefing sessions were student-focused and I really tried to keep my comments to a minimum. I asked questions like, describe your thought processes as you made decisions about Mr. Larson. And how will this experience influence your patient care? Or how did this experience with Mr. Larson connect to what you're learning in class? My students often struggled the most in empathy and teaching. And so I asked questions like, what are your strengths as a communicator? Which questions might be difficult or uncomfortable to ask a real patient? Or how would your questions have differed if the patient was a pediatric or geriatric patient? After implementing the debriefing sessions, I received positive feedback from students. They appreciated the opportunity to ask questions, clarify care, and really learn from me and their peers. In fact, the debriefing sessions helped students to buy into the simulations, and I saw better performance scores. Mm -hmm.